Hello everyone, today I'm going to share my C Twin builds and team compositions within the shark guide. As always, I start with a build, then go over teams and then some of this gameplay. And something I usually don't do when it comes to guides is give you my opinion on a little bit of a, what I feel like is wasted potential when it comes to designing her skill kit. It's nothing super crazy, I'm not saying she's bad or anything, but it's just enough to leave a little bit of a sour aftertaste in your mouth. Her build is quite straightforward, everything this character does scales off her max HP, so you definitely want to have as much as possible of it. And then, her burst skill does some very reasonable damage, so if you can fit some extra energy recharge crit or crit damage, it will serve you quite well as well. As for skills, the highest priority should definitely be the burst skill, it's a reasonable amount of damage like I said earlier. And then the elemental skill, it's not super impressive in terms of damage, but it is the main source of her healing, so it's definitely worth leveling this as well. And now the weird thing is, they didn't just copy paste the usual normal attacks for the bow, they actually put a lot of effort into designing unique attacks and even have a extra like mini bubble that shoots out while you charge her charge attack. And the weird thing is, nothing here has HP scaling, so it's really hard to justify using any of this. So I would even go as far as to say it's not even worth leveling this if you don't want to use it at all. As for Constellations, she has quite a few good ones. Constellation 1 just doubles down on her first passive skill with extra scaling for the characters that are off field for the elemental skill damage. And then Constellation 2 is kind of nothing, I wouldn't even bother about it. Constellation 4 extends the duration of her elemental burst skill from 2.5 seconds to 5.5 seconds, which is quite decent. At this point, you could even consider her using her as like a filler in quick swap teams, because she will have like the usual like 7 or 8 seconds of field time if you count in the time it takes to fully charge her elemental skill. And then Constellation 6 is just extra damage for her burst skill. As for weapons, it's kind of tough to find anything satisfying in terms of 4-star or 3-star weapons. As far as I know, there's no 4-star bow that has HP substats. I think there is supposed to be a 3-star weapon that has it, but I couldn't find it. I think it drops from chest randomly in the world, so if you happen to have it, definitely lock it and use it on her. Otherwise, I think your best bet is definitely the Stringless for the extra damage of her bear skill and even elemental skill. Otherwise, if you want to have some more energy, something like the Favonius bow can definitely work out as well. But I think in general, this character is someone who like, especially relies on her 5-star weapon just because there is such a lack of weapons that have HP substats. As for the artifacts, we already covered substats earlier. As for main stats, again, very straightforward. She just cares about HP percentage as a main stat in any slot to focus on her passive skill and in her damage in general. And if you have a lot of damage substats, you can do what I did and just go for an emblem set and double down on the damage of her burst skill. But again, if you have lower damage stats or you just want to have more utility, any utility artifact set like Noblesse Oblige, the Melilith set or even Song of Days Past, any one of those will be really good as well. As for team compositions, of course, Sea Tween is a healer, so if that's all you expect from her, keeping your team alive, then of course you can theoretically fit her in any team composition. But if you want to make use of her passive skill and find some useful synergy for her, then of course any sub DPS that does a lot of damage with the elemental skill while they're off field will be pretty good. To just name a few, for example, Shiori, Albedo, Nahida, Furina, Yaimiko, or Fischl, for example. Any of those options will will be quite nice and benefit a lot from the passive skill of Sea Tween. Now for actual team compositions, I think the best synergy for Sea Tween will be Furina. Of course, Hydro Resonance is great for these two characters since they both scale of HP. Furina needs a healer on her team to stack up her fanfare points, which can be managed by Sea Tween. And on top of that, she does a lot of damage while off-field with her elemental skill. Then next, I would pick something like Nahida to enable Bloom, and you get a lot of extra damage from the elemental skill as well. And in the last slot, something like Yaimiko, she is one of the better and enablers for Hyper Bloom, and she again does a lot of damage with her elemental skill while off field, and while you switch on field to press her burst skill, you also benefit from Nahida's burst skill ele extra elemental mastery to do a lot more Hyper Bloom damage. So I think again Sea Tween, Furina, and Yaimiko, and Nahida will be like a really great um, Hyper Bloom team for this. If you don't have those characters, you can definitely make do with other characters, like for example Baiju if you don't have Nahida, or something like Shinobu if you don't have 
um, Yai Miko to enable the Hyper Bloom. And another team I like to do is just going for Geo Resonance with hard hitting sub DPS characters because Geo Resonance is one of the better ones with the 15% damage for everyone on your team and 20% Geo Resistance Shred, which obviously makes a lot of sense if you have two hard hitting Geo characters in your team. For example, Giori or Albedo should be in your team, you can even pick them together. Otherwise, if you want a main DPS in your team to fill some field time, like Ningguang, Ito, C6, Noel, I think it's good too. And then I like to pick Fisher because of course of the elemental skill damage, but also her passive skill squeezes out a lot of extra damage if you trigger a lot of electro reactions like electro crystallize. And then Sea Tween is obviously here to buff everybody's elemental skill damage, but also if you pick full sub DPS like Fisher, Shiori and Albedo, she can fill a little bit of field time with fully charging her elemental skill into her bear skill. I think that's definitely enough to not have too much downtime downtime, sorry, and it's definitely a decent team in my opinion. And to address the elephant in the room, of course, Sea Tween also creates the water droplets that Novelette uses to activate his charge attack. So there is definitely some synergy here. You also get Hydro Resonance, and again, both of them scale off max HP. So it's definitely not bad, but I'm not super impressed by this, mostly because Novelette obviously doesn't have off-field elemental skill damage, but also I think there are better choices for Novelette overall. And then if you definitely want to play them, you can obviously throw in something like Fischl and Zhongli just to have some more hydro reactions to scale Novelette's passive skill. And for now I'm gonna leave you with uh, some Abyss gameplay and come back at the end. Alright, we made it to the end. Usually, whenever I want to be opinionated, I do a second video separate of this and leave it out of the guide because I think this doesn't really have a place in a video like this. But in case you haven't pulled this character yet and there are some like major like questionable design choices, I think it's uh, fair to point that out just to make you aware of it. And I think, first of all, this passive skill doesn't really do anything. It's 30% extra healing. I don't know. It's not really interesting to me. It's basically nothing to me. Then again, her normal attacks, I feel like they put so much effort into them. They should have HP scaling. So this also feels a little bit weird. And then, of course, her constellation 2 is just a 8 second hydro shield. That's it. I don't know why this is so being sold as a constellation. That's definitely a little bit weird to me. But yeah. I think she is definitely, like a lot of potential is lost along the way when designing her skill kit, it feels to me, and I, I don't think it feels good. That being said, I don't think she is a terrible character, she is like no Shichi or something, you can definitely use her and she does something relevant. So again, if you want to pull for her, just be aware of it, but she is not by no means like useless, that's not what I'm getting at. But in general, she does some crowd control with her elemental skills. She can imprison smaller enemies. She also provides some utility to other characters with her elemental skill. And her bear skill does some reasonable damage. So essentially, she does a similar job as Zhongli. Zhongli has better utility on his elemental skill, I would argue. He also provides better crowd control, I would argue, because he can petrify strong enemies. She can, uh, Sea Tween can only, only imprison small enemies. And on top of that, I think shields are better than heals because they also provide resistance to interruption. So if you want a character that does something similar, I think Zhongli is definitely the better go to option, in my opinion. Anyway, I guess that's it for my Sea Tween coverage and the live stream should probably be coming up soon next week sometime. So uh, stay tuned for, for my coverage of that. Until then, have fun and bye bye.